It is my honor to introduce EVC Provost Carter to well, provide the welcoming remarks. Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Emily Carter. Thank you, Wendy. Great to see you and to see all of you here today. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the Semel HCI Health Equity Summit. We're so glad all of you could join us online for this very timely and important discussion. In these truly unprecedented times, vast health disparities have truly come to the fore as communities of color in particular are disproportionately affected by COVID-19. We are also moved to take action as we contend with the unhealed wounds of systemic racism in our country. We take action in many ways. At UCLA, we are very interested in discussing and implementing actionable steps for the entire university community to support a society that is more just and free of health inequities and other inequities and racism. We want to particularly look at how universities can identify pathways to building equitable communities. It's, a, it's been one of my goals since coming back to UCLA when I have talked to many of you about widening the scope of Sustainable LA Grand Challenge to include thinking about uh, equitable cities, the future of cities in terms of sustainability, resilience, equitability, and livability. And now health is front and center for all of us as a result of the pandemic. A culture of health then is one way to meet these aims. It really is the foundation of, of being able to do anything in our lives as we, as we see today. We need to remember that health and well-being are not luxuries, but the core of a successful society. Beyond our own health, this is about the health of our neighbors and the communities in which we live, study, work, and play. It's imperative that institutions like Semel HCI continue to shed light on health inequities and actively work to address them. Building from the bottom up and inside out through collaborations with students, staff, faculty, community partners, the Semel HCI has catalyzed innovations on our campus and made well-being the foundation of a more just community at UCLA. But we know there's more work to be done. Chancellor Block and I wrote to the Bruin community on Juneteenth that none of us can be all we want to be until all of us can be all we want to be. This summit is one piece of the beginning of that journey, and I'm so pleased that you are all a part of it. Today, maybe you, know, you, you received already just a few minutes ago, yet another Bruin post from the Chancellor and I. We have been working for the entire month of June talking with constituencies, looking very hard across all of, of our campus as to what we can do to really make a difference in, in to show that black lives truly matter at UCLA and to, to focus our attention on how we make all of us, the entire community thrive. So this summit is, is, is a part of, of, of that journey. So I wanted to just end by saying that I am so grateful to Jane Semmel for her vision and her support of the HCI and to Alonzo Plow from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for joining us. And I wanna thank all of you for being here and I hope you have a productive summit. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much EVC Provost Carter for your leadership and wise words during, the, during these unprecedented times. And the last email is just a perfect example of the incredible leadership you and Jean Block are taking today. Thank you so much. And now it is with the highest regard, I introduce Dr. Nicole Green, who is the Executive Director of CAPS and the co-lead of our Semel HCI Mindwell Pod, which is focused on promoting social connectedness and creative achievement. Take it away, Nicole. Hi, all my friends. It's really great Hi. to be here and to see you and to say uh, thank you for convening this, uh, Wendy. And also, I'd like to thank Jane as well, just for the commitment to Healthy Campus Initiative and to all that we do. Um, I, Wendy just asked me to say a few words. I think. Um, because I think as a black psychologist and the head of CAPS, I've sort of been at the epicenter of what's been going on recently around um, anti-blackness and the racial injustice that's really happened across the country. And I've um, facilitated just a tremendous amount of healing spaces um, 
for all Bruins, but particularly for Black Bruins, and really held a lot of the grief and the pain and the anger, but also the hope. And I really um, wanted to just say that I think the work of health equity is really important in this big um, change to the system that we really need to make because in my mind, um, at the core of health inequity, it really um, stands a lot of racism. And anti-racism work is really the work of trying to create more health equity. And really what I wanna say is, um, <clears throat> if we believe, and, and anti-racism work really is the work saying that, if we believe that all people are worthy of health and wholeness and well-being and really um, to be our best selves and live our best lives, that if that really we believe that then, and we believe that the people are not the problem, we have to really examine our systems, our policies, our procedures that are really creating the health inequity. And really what I wanna to say to the summit today is I, I, you know, I trust the brilliance of this group of how we can come together to think about the relationship, how to create equity as a stance toward anti-racism and anti-blackness. And I just wanted to share my hope that we can come up with some creative solutions and ideas. I also was uh, profoundly affected by the post that just came out. I was an undergrad here and we were asking for a black resource center 20 some odd years ago then, even though I'm only 29, but we were asking for one then, and it's nice to see it start to come to fruition and to really have this focus right now. And I hope that we can keep the momentum going, and I'm really um, anxious to hear about all the ways that we can continue to move this forward. So thank you all for the time. Well, thank you, Nicole, your real treasure for UCLA. And I'm glad you came back after you graduated, after you went to Harvard and USC. We run, we got, we won. Uh, you're an incredible, you, you, your incredible commitment to social justice and your leadership in caring for our community's emotional and social well-being are so valued. And we thank you so much. And now, with great respect, I introduce Dr. Alonzo Plow, Vice President for Research and Evaluation and Chief Science Officer of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And he is also an Angelino in, at heart. So uh, take it away, Alonzo. Thank you, at, at heart, but temporarily in Princeton. Uh, well, glad to be with you all this afternoon. Um, I think many of you know that health equity uh, is the major focus uh, for the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and has been. Um, and the events around COVID and certainly the events around the anti-black racist killings in Minneapolis and other cities uh, really causes us to double down on that commitment. And I wanna make a couple of global remarks when you uh, wanted some brief comments, just on um, how we can make sure we use this moment, and I may say this again, we use this moment to become not just a moment, but to also become a movement where we recognize much more deeply that you know, structural racism is the defining context for inequity in COVID, and it's also the defining context for what we see with uh, anti-Black racist killings in Minneapolis and other cities. Um, and and I, I wanna also draw a distinction. Uh, I know a lot of commentators are saying we have two pandemics. We have a pandemic of COVID-19 and a pandemic of racism. Well, I'm trying to be a really good epidemiologist about this. We have a pandemic about this virus, but we have endemic racism sustained, historical, deeply permeating uh, throughout multiple manifestations of our policies, practices, and our individual mindsets. Uh, and I think for this to become a movement and change and not just a moment, uh, uh, the major challenge to get to health equity is to challenge uh, endemic racism, this you know, enduring set of negative beliefs, assumptions, attitudes toward people of color. Um, and then a, a general lack of the recognition by the white population of the uh, chronic and endemic nature of racism on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, it's tragic that it takes the disproportionality in COVID outcomes or the uh, nearly nine minute killing of a man on the street to bring a threshold of recognition to the persistent forces of endemic uh, racism uh, that influence uh, health disparities and stand in the way of our quest for health equity. Um, and I think the next month and your work that you will be doing out of this workshop will really uh, make sure that this threshold event becomes a movement for structural change and not a momentary and passing recognition. Uh, I think all of you know, because you've been working on this, that uh, 
uh, the many manifestations, and I think in the provost's comments, it was implicit. We have to get deeper than even healthcare outcomes. We have to look uh, at Minneapolis, Los Angeles, all of our cities around the historical planning covenants that created segregated neighborhoods, redlining, disinvestments in schools, restricted access to capital, living wage jobs, persistent poverty, marginalized communities. You know, all of these have uh, have kind of stressed out communities in spite of the tremendous resilience and commitment and strength in our community. Um, you know, it's not, you know, so I think that we uh, have to recognize that these forces have kind of created conditions uh, that create these poor outcomes. And again, the road to health equity can only pass through recognizing uh, endemic racism. Anyone who hasn't followed or read the um, New York Times series, the 1619 Project, really, really important. Um, uh, we had that, that author as a speaker at our annual um, knowledge sharing meeting in uh, Mississippi this year, the last travel that I did in this year of COVID uh, in late March. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Nicole, the, the reporter who did this uh, said, said something simple but very powerful. He said either policies are either racist or they're anti-racist. They're either racist or they're anti-racist. And I think we need to look at that and the kind of changes. And then uh, those of us, I'll end with this, in public health and healthcare, you know, we recognize the implications of racism to, uh, to downstream, uh, illness outcomes, um, disparities in life expectancy, uh, social determinants versus economic determinants, vulnerable populations without a con understanding the context of those vulnerabilities. So I hope that out of today, uh, you will uh, sharpen your continued focus on well-being and equity. Uh, Robert Johnson Foundation is very happy to have been supporting uh, some of your efforts in this regard. Um, I think that this will be a movement and not a moment, and I think that there is a pathway for change, and I think you're definitely poised to be a part of that. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Alonzo, also for supporting the Healthy Campus Network and our work to um, build a culture of health, and also for your leadership across the globe, building a culture of health. Um, and also carving out the time today to be giving us some of your wisdoms. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, now we'll hear on a Zoom recording from our esteemed VC Monroe Gordon of Student Affairs, who's a key member and committed member of our SEML ACI steering committee. He couldn't make it today, so he um, recorded a Zoom. Uh, recording. Go ahead, uh, Rafi or Megan. Hello, my name is Monroe Gordon, and I am the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at UCLA. I'd like to thank Associate Vice Provost Slusser for the opportunity to address everyone at the CIMIL HCI 2020 Health Summit. You have heard from and will hear from speakers who will indicate how important health equity is for our campus and for our community. As a member of and a longtime supporter of the wonderful programs that happen within the CIMIL HCI, I know that health equity is something that is at the very core of what, the work that, that goes on. It is also at the very core of our priorities and our principles at UCLA. I'd like to spend just a few minutes in telling you about the work that we do within student affairs that promotes health equity. I'm very proud to say that as the Vice Chancellor, I represent over 800 staff and over 26 departments within Student Affairs, all dedicated to a variety of constituents, but perhaps most primarily the students. We have a number of basic needs programs throughout our various departments, but maybe two that I will highlight uh, come from, first off, our Dean of Students. And the Dean of Students oversees a group called the Economic Crisis Response Team. This is a team that provides meal vouchers, emergency housing, and also simply funding for students who are in economic distress. Another area that provides basic needs funding is through our community programs office. Hopefully many of you have heard about our food pantry, uh, which is really the award-winning food pantry. And that is overseen by our director for the community programs office, Antonio Sandoval. Antonio is also the chair of the Basic Needs Committee at UCLA, and that's a committee that helps to ensure that we are distributing funds to the appropriate departments that are assisting students with their basic needs. 
these are just two of the areas in student affairs that provide a lot of direct service to our students who are in need and who look very, very closely and examine very carefully this question of health equity amongst our students. Now, the one thing I would leave you with, I think, uh, as the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, is to ensure that as we talk about these really important, these very critical areas, such as health equity, that we are not leaving out the specific voices and perspectives of our students. I think that it is so important that as we hold these conversations, that we ensure that we are bringing in the perspectives and the voices of the individuals who we are often serving. It's also important to recognize and realize that our students, both today and through tomorrow, are the leaders of this world. And so by including their perspectives, we're actually ensuring that we're moving things along in a dedicated and progressive fashion that will allow us all to achieve what we're trying to achieve. So with that, I'll make room for the next speaker. Thank you again for having me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the summer. Thank you, VC Gordon, for your groundbreaking work and for your wise and empathetic leadership, building equity and inclusivity for students, staff, and faculty. And now, last but not least, I am pleased to introduce Administrative Vice Chancellor Michael Beck who's also a dedicated and essential member of our SEML ECI steering committee. Welcome, VC Beck. Great, thanks Wendy, and, and it's good to see everybody. Thanks for taking out the time today to get together to talk about some of these uh, really critical issues facing uh, both our campus, but as our country and, as our, and our world in so many ways. Seeing how the COVID-19 cases have risen so dramatically over the last two weeks, is it a good reminder that we are still in a pandemic? HCI is actually a perfect entity to facilitate uh, strategies for dealing with and helping to mitigate the health risks that our campus community uh, will face either now or in the fall. Uh, we could be looking at, uh, uh, HCI could actually facilitate uh, ways uh, coming up with creative uh, solutions for creating a culture where you know wearing a face covering is considered the normal or even considered cool on campus. A recent survey showed that only 58% of the people on campus were actually wearing face coverings this last week. Uh, recognizing such an importance, uh, Lucy Jones, uh, you know our famed uh, earthquake expert you know, it was quoted on a podcast earlier indicating that we need to figure out a way of uh, communicating that uh, we need not share our air at the moment. Uh, and that'll be the best way to actually reduce uh, ultimately the spread of uh, COVID-19. And so I think when we look at health, uh, HCI as a way to look at how we can uh, make health in this environment uh, something that uh, resonates across our, our campus in such a positive way. Uh, we could also uh, talk, uh, look at figuring out ways to encourage and again, making it part of our culture to take the stairs when one can so you can avoid the close quarters of an elevator or following other mitigation measures to really help the, reduce the spread of COVID-19 and to keep uh, people ultimately from dying, which is what we're talking about. And we should not forget that the needs of our uh, Bruin community with regard to the social well-being associated with the physical distancing, the safer at home orders, and other uh, things that are keeping us away from each other and the impacts that has on our community. And shifting a little bit, I think we uh, still have lots of work to do in focusing on uh, other issues that the campus uh, faces, like basic needs that Vice Chancellor Gordon referred to, uh, dealing with food insecurity and other needs that our campus community struggles with every day, uh, separate and apart from the challenges that we're facing uh, uh, so presently today with the uh, incredible awareness of structural racism and uh, the pandemic that we're trying to, uh, trying to get through as, as a community, as a family. 
So thank you for being here. We appreciate all the work that all of you do and uh, under Jane and Wendy's leadership and uh, looking forward to the discussions that can occur today. Thank you for the opportunity to share a few words. Thank you, VC Beck, for your support of Semel ACI's work, which has led to sweeping changes on campus, resulting in improving the health and well-being of the entire UCLA campus. And I look forward to working uh, with it with you more uh, in the future. We all do. Uh, and thank you to all the esteemed speakers for your wise contributions and guidance as we navigate these uncharted waters. And thank you, Jane and Terry Semel, for your vision and continued support of Semel HCI. And thank you, Jane, for working with us side by side to brainstorm and innovate over these past eight years. And now, as we recover and reimagine a better today and tomorrow, she's still side by side with all of us. I wanna thank all of the participants who are on the Zoom today, kicking off the Semel HCI 2020 Health Equity Summit. Our goal is to be bold and dream about how we can strengthen our common vision of fostering health and well being and reducing health inequities building a culture of health at UCLA, UC, and beyond. We're strong, we strongly believe that the Semel HCI centers and subsequent UC-wide Healthy Campus Network has prepared us to respond nimbly to the current well-being and social needs of our UCLA and UC and, UC and California community during these unprecedented times. Modeling upon our past summits, Semel HCI is hosting UCLA student leaders, deans, vice chancellors, vice provosts, the provosts, faculty, senior administrators, and staff to refine our campus goals and strategies to build a healthier and more equitable future for all. For this summit, we have also invited representatives from the UCs, UC Extension, Cal States, California Community Colleges, the CDC, the American Medical Association, as well as leaders from foundations and community organizations. As we recover from the COVID, or might maybe not recover, <laughs> you know, there's a stall from the COVID-19 pandemic and reimagine a more equitable world after the urgent demand for social justice due to George Floyd's tragic death, this summit will kick off discussions with a laser focus on health inequity to identify positive actions we can take to improve the determinants of social, emotional, and physical well being for all. In 16 small group discussions of six to seven people each, there'll be a scribe and a facilitator. You will discuss your priorities for health equity related to academics, such as teaching and degree programs, experiential opportunities, such as campus and work life and, out and community outreach, and cultural such as including empathy and inclusiveness in our culture. After 50 minutes, 50, 50 minutes, each group will have two minutes to report back on actionable recommendations and next steps. Semel HCI Center and all our partners will work towards meeting the summit outcomes based on our track record with other summits. And for those that don't remember, there was the food summit that resulted in the food studies undergraduate minor the Food Studies Graduate Certificate Program, the Food Literacy Research Projects, Teaching Kitchen on campus, and pivoting to a virtual teaching kitchen during COVID. The Mind Body Summit that just recently re resulted in a Mind Body Minor, the Jane B. Semmel Community Garden a couple years ago, and then the Rejuvenating the Life Skills course that has over 600 students enrolled in the class annually. And this number will increase next year thanks to EVC Provost Carter's support. So what better group to launch reimagining a world free of racism and strong in empathy and equity than with the students, staff, and faculty in the UC system, the best public university in the world, whose mission is education, research, and public service. We stood up for our DACA students, and we will now work on lasting changes to reach health equity for all. As my father says, your health is your best friend. And he also says, don't judge someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. My father passed away last week at 91 years old, having survived the deadly COVID-19 virus, but succumbing to the aftermath of complications of it. Every one of us has experienced sacrifice, challenges, and silver linings 
during the pandemic and subsequent racial injustices. I am dedicating the summit to my father. I invite each one of you to think about who or what idea you want to dedicate this summit to. And if you like, share it in the chat box during your small group discussions. Thank you all for all your brain power, talent, empathy, commitment to health equity and social justice and anti-racism. Uh, I'm gonna keep the uh, conclusion of remarks short, but I want to say them because this is being recorded and so we'll be able to um, share it with some people who couldn't make it. Uh, we're going to create two reports based on the summit discussions. One will be a high level summary and the second will include more details from the discussion, this, the discussion groups. Based on the priorities identified in the summit by all of you, we will create a goal-driven working group uh, or groups, um, and we welcome all of you to participate in or volunteer to lead and or invite others to the table. And so like I hear loud and clear Tristan's call to include more inclusivity and that we are um, all there for it. This is just the beginning of a movement that we're gonna be working towards um, supporting um, years to come. Some of the immediate actions that I think all of us um, can do is review the chancellor and the EBC provost email in more detail that came out just before this summit um, and see what we can take out from that. Uh, recommendation to take actions. A second is um, something that I've uh, picked up from many of what you were commenting on here and I've read in my readings. Educational resources about anti-racism and health equity will be curated and made available to all either virtually or and we'll work with our librarians or in physically once we get back uh, in a physical space. Uh, and another one is um, the uh, goal-driven working groups will start this summer. So we're going to curate what was recommended by all of you. It's not necessarily going to be the final set of working groups, but we are going to start working groups this summer. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you know, Semel HCI and partners are also committed to providing catalytic funding. I know that uh, Chancellor Block and EVC Provost Carter also have catalytic funding for research. Our catalytic funding is for UCLA student groups, staff, and faculty for community projects to address reduce, and reduce health inequities during this time of COVID recovery and reimagining a world free of racism and strong in empathy and equity. Uh, and we might redefine that based on many of the conversations that were going on in the different um, uh, working group or smaller group discussions today. And as I said before, what better group to launch reimagining a world free of racism and strong in empathy and equity than with the student staff and faculty in the UC system, the best public university in the world, whose mission is education, research, and public service. And uh, I think my dad would have been proud uh, for this summit. I have much gratitude to all of the speakers, participants, scribes, and facilitators, and to Louise Eno, Megan Wang, San Ezen Mugo, Katie Embury, Rafi Simonian, Jim Davis, Talene Ananian, Mark Biedlingmeyer, and Ted Robles, and Aloy Delos Reyes, for all the preparation and behind the scenes work. I, you can imagine how much, it ha how much uh, control tower work this was. And I look forward to the next steps with as many as of you in July. Have a great July 4th weekend. Enjoy yourselves. And I wanna thank you so much for all you have done today to make this a better world. Mm -hmm.